the circumcision of Christ. When God established his relationship with Abraham, he gave him a token of the covenant, which is the circumcision of the flesh. There is what we call the circumcision of Christ or the circumcision of the heart. What is the circumcision of Christ? Is there a connection between the circumcision of the flesh and the circumcision of Christ? That is what we are talking about today and we are starting right now. In the earliest days of the relationship between God Almighty and Abraham, circumcision of the flesh was introduced. Genesis 17 verse 10 to 11. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed, that means his children, after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. This circumcision was of the flesh, but it was a token of the covenant between God and men. The covenant was very specific in that every male child was supposed to be circumcised, even if that child is a slave or a child of a slave. This circumcision meant that you had a relationship with God. What is amazing to me is that even children who didn't even know anything about God at the time were in a relationship with God. In fact, as a child, they would circumcise you without you even agreeing to it. Talk less of believing in circumcision. For as long as you were born in Abraham's house, the relationship between you and God was there and it was strong. So, we can see that circumcision in the flesh meant a covenant. It meant a relationship. A baby of eight days old was ready for circumcision for as far as God was concerned. Genesis 17 verse 12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every male child in your generation, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy sin. I know that many mothers today would not agree to this. Well, if you refuse that your baby should be circumcised, then that child will not have a relationship with God, the God of Abraham. And God also spoke about those who would be found without the circumcision. Genesis 17 verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Ah! That is serious. Imagine breaking the covenant of God by refusing the circumcision of the flesh. He says that soul shall be cut off from his people. If you don't know the meaning of being cut off from your people, watch this video titled, He was cut off so that I might be grafted in. Being cut off from your people is far worse than being put to death. Okay. Here you are as a child, and as you grow, you see that you have been circumcised. How were you supposed to connect this circumcision with God? By teaching. Your parents must teach you. Genesis 18 verse 19. For I know him. This is God Almighty talking about Abraham. He says, For I know him that he will command his children and his household, praise God, after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. If Abraham did not teach his children about the circumcision, his children would not find anything important about the circumcision or the relationship with God. Teaching was necessary because it was through the teaching that the covenant of God was maintained. All right. Now, let us come over to the circumcision of the heart, which is the circumcision of Christ. The children of Israel were in a relationship with God by circumcision of the flesh. But they were still stubborn, or as it is described, stiff-naked. So God came up with another plan. Let us read about the plan. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. He says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-naked. Can you see that? So that they will not be stubborn. It is possible to be circumcised in the flesh and be very stubborn. In fact, the children of Israel who came out of Egypt were circumcised, but they constantly opposed God and were overthrown in the wilderness. They all died. So God knew that the circumcision of the flesh was not really a solution, and he brought in another circumcision, which is the circumcision of the heart. He said, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. How were they supposed to do this? Jeremiah 4 verse 4. Circumcise yourself to the Lord. I like that. 
and take away the foreskin of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Lest my fury come forth like fire and bend that that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. By circumcising yourself to the Lord, you are taking the foreskin of your heart. Uncircumcised heart will continue in evil doings, as Jeremiah said. That heart is very wicked. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? As terrible as this uncircumcised heart is to the Lord, the Lord brought in the solution. The solution is to circumcise the heart. How does he do this? Ezekiel 36 verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart. This is the uncircumcised heart, the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. The circumcised heart is the heart of is the new heart which the Lord gives. A true and a healthy relationship can begin after this process. Let us look at something else about the circumcised heart. Deuteronomy 30 verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed, that means your children, to love, okay? The purpose of circumcising, he says, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Oh my God, this is powerful. He is telling us that you will only be able to love God with all your heart after the circumcision of your heart. This is remarkable. Ability to love God with all your heart is possible in the circumcised heart. First John chapter 4, verse 19. He says, we love him because he first loved us. We love God because he first loved us. Who is we? It's the Christians, those who are baptized in the Spirit, those who are born again. This means that the circumcision of the heart is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Let me say that again. The circumcision of the heart is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit speaks of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. The Christians are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. There is a connection between circumcision of the heart and the baptism of the spirit, as I said. Colossians 2 verse 11 to 12. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins, that is the foreskin of sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. So, the circumcision of the heart is the circumcision of Christ, and that is salvation. This is how we get the new heart and become new creatures in Christ Jesus. When we go for water baptism, we are finalizing the last step of, this, of the circumcision. What about our children? As I said in the beginning, the circumcision of the flesh included the children. So, the circumcision of the heart should also include our children. That is why we have to baptize our children, even though they do not understand because of age. This is because the Bible says it clearly that our children belong to God. If we have the parents, the parents who believe in God, then our children believe in, the, our children believe in God. Lastly, the circumcision of the heart is the mark of the Spirit. At the rapture of the church, if you don't have the circumcised heart, you are not going anywhere. Until next time, this is Bishop Judah, dissolving doubts and explaining of hard sentences through the word of God. God bless you.